All right, well, let's head to the States now and talk to the man himself, Michael Boxall from Minnesota United. Thanks so much for your time. Oh, and we've got a child as well. Brilliant. Yeah. How are you guys going? Thank you for having me on. <laughs> Who's this little one? This is my daughter, Maxwell. She, G'day, so. how are you? I yeah, like the confidence and the lack of shyness. That's a good <laughs> yeah. sign. That's a good sign early on. Yeah. So you've got to be happy with that. A, a, a career in the media. Well, beckons. just, yeah. you know, you want personality. Hey, Michael, <laughs> uh, thanks so much for your time on the, on the Kiwi Football Fix. You're in the midst of MLS playoffs. How's the season mm -hmm. gone to date? Uh, pretty solid, I think. I mean, obviously, despite everything that's gone on, we've, we've put together a, a pretty consistent season and I think the last two months or so we've really started to find some form and getting into playoffs um scoring a few goals keeping clean sheets i think we're unbeaten in eight or nine matches so yeah we're, we're obviously excited for this game this weekend yeah and you come up against sporting kansas complete with your all whites teammate winston reed how much are you looking forward to mm -hmm. that collision and how do you think when he's been going in the mls uh, he's, he's settled in very quickly. I think Sporting Kansas have been a very consistently good team, always near the, the top um, of their conference. And I think he, he's been a great addition for them. Now that he's found full fitness and got a run on games, he's banged in a few goals. Um, he's been pretty solid for them. And, I mean, it's always tough coming from overseas to, to this league. And he's settled in very quickly. And... Yeah, um, obviously hoping to hoping the season finishes this weekend, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> Michael, what's been the the biggest challenge of this season with all the dramas that have gone on with COVID in the United States? Um, I think for us, it's just the the uncertainty. Obviously, we had two games before the the rest of the season was postponed for must have been four at least four maybe five months. And then just not knowing when you're going to start again. And then so we're literally just r running around the parks and the streets for two, three months and then individual training, which is never fun. Um, and then obviously we went, we went to Orlando to do a, a bubble tournament down there. Um, so then five, six weeks away from the family wasn't too easy. And then they still at that stage, they still weren't sure what the rest of the season was going to look like. And. So as a, as a footballer, you're just not too sure how to prepare for that. So I think, yeah, that uncertainty has just been been the toughest part. But, yeah, here we are in the conference semifinals um, with all that behind us now. Yeah, being down here in New Zealand, I, I suppose we get little snippets in the news um, telling us about mm -hmm. how Donald Trump's behaving like a madman, the election's underway, <laughs> COVID-19 and people... Uh, not wanting to, um, you know, go into quarantine facilities and, and isolate and all that sort of stuff. What's it been like for you mm -hmm. being over there in America and, and experiencing all of this, uh, what's going on in 2020? Um, I mean, with me and my family, we're kind of like in a bubble even before um, COVID hit. So it's like, like, it's not like we're every night out of the restaurants and I certainly don't go to the bars um so it's i mean for the first few months it was kind of like normal like obviously all the the essentials were still open and um so it wasn't too different for us i think although we have the days that we've wanted breaks it, it's been it's been a bit more difficult to do that I obviously take the kids to to public facilities like the zoos or um the children's museum obviously all those are closed um I think for the most part, because we pretty much keep to ourselves most of the time, it's it's hasn't been too much different. Mm. And what about the the squad itself? Um, were there any mm -hmm. COVID scares or anything like that? And, and if so, how did the the club deal with them? Um, obviously, that's all pretty much regulated by the league. And yeah, I think our team has had maybe three or four cases where. And then as soon as the case comes, then you're getting tested every single, the entire team's getting tested every single day. The facility shuts down. Um, so we've had our, we've had a few games canceled, um, training disrupted for like two, three weeks just because of that. So it's, yeah, it's, it's far from ideal and it's 
been a couple of times where we've not been able to train as at all as a team for like at least 10 days and then we've still had to play a match on the on the 11th day which yeah isn't, isn't the best preparation and michael just away from the football uh, i know you've been there a mm -hmm. long time i'm trying to think you've probably almost a, a citizen there now but uh, you've been there you've been there a long long time what do you enjoy about mm -hmm. life in, in America? What's, what's cool about it? Because it, it's an amazing country, so there must be some, some really, really cool things about living there. Um, yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, probably since I was 18, spent probably close to eight, nine years here. Um, no, I really enjoy it. Obviously, the, I mean, it's, for, for us, the, the comforts and everything that you expect, it's pretty similar to, to being back in New Zealand, um, obviously me growing up, I, I got into a lot of. Uh, I was very interested in the NBA, so being over here, it's it's cool, cool to have that. And um, in non-COVID years, our the owner of our football club actually has like five or six courtside seats to the Timberwolves. So to be able to to be with almost touching distance of like LeBron James or Jimmy Butler has has been pretty ridiculous and not something I thought I would have uh, been able to do if you'd asked me at 17, 18. Mm. Uh, recently, you ran into a goalpost. Why did you do that? And <laughs> who came off second best? <laughs> That's something I wouldn't recommend you do. Yeah. Um, 11 <laughs> stitches later, um, I came off second best. Uh, just trying to do what you can to prevent goals. Um, I mean... If I knew it was going to go anyways, probably would have pulled out of that challenge. But uh, <laughs> goalposts, uh, they're, they're pretty solid things, you know. Um, I, I hear the goalposts went in but... studs up. <laughs> yeah, with the with the cut I got, you would have thought so. But um, <laughs> no, no, no. That's Yeah, they need to switch that one out. Mm. Uh, it's, it's not a nice one. <laughs> Mate, I, I mm. remember a few years ago, and you may not remember this, but... Um, you used to have a chat with um, Darcy Waldegrave and myself on Radio Sport, and you were the self-proclaimed. Yeah, you do remember the self-proclaimed fastest man at the Wellington Phoenix. Yeah, we but were we supposed never, to have a race, and he he never showed up. Yeah, we never we never got around to having that foot race. Um, how how is the pace? Like, is it is it still as as quick as it's ever been, or have you started to slow down in your old age? Um. No, it's it's I've still got I'd say it's still pretty close to what it was. Um, wow, still training pretty hard. So still, yeah. Obviously, with our GPSs, we they track all of that and what our top speed is. So I think I'd be there or thereabouts. So yeah, if he still wants to race, I'll I'll be back in I don't know five or six weeks if he if he wants to run that back. Uh, I think Darcy's like pushing sixty now, so it's probably not best <laughs> that we get him out on the on the running track, and I'm damn near 40. So I think I might pass, mate. <laughs> it's just it an opportunity miss. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, on, the, good, on the football good. field, um, there, there mm. were a couple of games slated to go. I think one would have been played a, a couple of weeks ago, Michael. Um, uh, England mm. and Belgium for the All Whites. Can you talk to us mm -hmm. about the excitement uh, when it was first announced and then the disappointment when they had to be cancelled? Yeah, obviously had a few talks with Danny like previously in the era and hearing whispers and rumors of what might happen. And yeah, I think the October, November windows were looking yeah very promising considering we we hadn't played for a long, long time. Um, so yeah, I think the thing I've enjoyed most about my football career is my time with the national team. Um, gone to some pretty cool places and there's yeah so many great guys to play with on that team coming from all all walks of life and um yeah so when we have those sort of opportunities we kind of that's when we really want to like jump at them and, and i think as any sportsman you really want to challenge yourself against the best in the world and i think england and belgium are what they're both must be like i think one was number one england's got to be top 10 top 20 so yeah, you really want to test yourself against the best. How tough has it been for you, Michael, with the the All Whites who showed so much promise uh, last November in Ireland and then against mm -hmm. Lithuania, this young group that Danny Hayes bringing through and you haven't been able to get back together and you might not be able to get back together until March or April. How, how, how tough is that to take? 
Uh, yeah, it is frustrating. Um, obviously, when we, I think particularly the first, I don't know, 60, 70 minutes of that game against Ireland, we, yeah, I was so happy with what I saw. And obviously, my first time playing with a lot of these, these young players who heading into that window, I wasn't sure what to expect. But then, yeah, first 10, 15 minutes of the game, all these young Kiwis are, are putting it up with against some premiership and championship players who, which is like one of two of the toughest leagues around the world. So, um, yeah, after that, you really want to hit 2020, get the ball rolling and um, really push on. But then obviously this crazy world had, had different plans and yeah, kind of all been on hold. But I, I guess it's kind of given given us opportunities to to focus on club football. Um, I think MLS doesn't really stop for, for all FIFA windows. So you've kind of just be, to be able to be present with your club and even though there has been a big hiatus and whatnot. Um, yeah, you, I mean, I miss international football so much. Um, looking back to that Ireland game, I, yeah, hopefully the, the calendar can resume next year and can resume safely. Yeah, fingers crossed, mate. And uh, in the time being, yeah. I'm sure you'll just plough on with Minnesota United in the MLS playoffs. How, how deep do you think you can go, mate? you think you can go all the way? Have you got the team, the squad? I think our, our front four is pretty dangerous and um, we're, we're a pretty tough team to break down. And I don't, I don't think um, a trophy is, is unrealistic for this team. Um, I think, but yeah, first things first, we've got to, got to take care of, of winning it at his place. Yeah, yeah. Studs up, challenge in the thigh or groin area. <laughs> I'm expecting to see that. We've got coverage on Sky as well. Michael Boxel, thanks so much for your time on the Kiwi Football Fix. Great to see you. Go well, mate. Uh, thanks for having me, guys.